it's Glenn Scrivener from Speak Life. We're doing Reading Between the Lines, and our 14th phrase is, they were naked and were not ashamed. Genesis chapter 2 is quite a famous reading for weddings. It's often used because it is the original marriage. And yet often uh, the reader, who might not be used to, to reading out in church, uh, will get to the final verse. And if they're a blushing bridesmaid, they'll be blushing all the more. Because verse 25 says this, The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Um, I've had the experience of, of readers then coming to me and saying, am I allowed to say that in church? Um, yeah, you really are, because this is here in the Bible. And even though these days we look on nakedness as a cause for much shame and embarrassment, originally Adam and Eve were naked and felt no shame. And we find it hard to even think ourselves into that scenario. Uh, one of the deepest, most horrifying nightmares that people have is this fear of being naked in public. Because we don't like to have eyes upon us. We feel very self-conscious. We don't like to be transparent to one another. We feel like we've got things to hide. And that's true not just on a physical level, it's true on an emotional level. And so to feel naked and unashamed feels wrong. It feels weird. It feels strange. Uh, and yet in the Bible, it says that this was the original state of humanity. Transparent, naked before one another, transparent and naked before God. What happened? What's gone wrong? Well, in chapter 3, let me read you a few verses about what went wrong. Chapter 3, verse 6, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat from? It's very interesting. The Lord says, Who told you you were naked? Adam and Eve have no concept even of nakedness. Because what is it to be naked when there's no such thing as clothes? What is it to be ashamed when there's nothing to be ashamed of? But something has happened. Sin has passed into Adam and Eve and they no longer feel comfortable in their own skins. We have that saying, don't we? Um, the great goal in life is to be comfortable in your own skin. And uh, of course we look up to these models and supermodels and uh, we think that they must be comfortable in their own skins, mustn't they? And then you ask them about their own feelings, about their, how they look, and, and, and of course they are just as plagued with insecurities as the rest of us. Even those who take their clothes off to a very large degree are uncomfortable in their own skin. And the feeling of exposure instantly leads to a feeling of shame. We don't even have to think about it. It's almost at the speed of thought. Exposure leads to shame. And shame leads to anger and lashing out very often. I was reading a, a study recently about uh, murder rates in prisons and how um, in interviewing uh, murderers in prison, the number one thing that uh, triggered the murder in, in each and every case was the murderer feeling shamed about something. They felt ashamed and so instantly they didn't know how to cover themselves and they lashed out in anger. Shame is a very deep-seated thing. Do you, do you feel it deeply? Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote in um, The Great Divorce, there's a, a fantastic line where one of the characters says, um, there are things too hot to touch, but you can swallow them all right. Shame is like that. That's a profound thing. That there are some things that are too hot to handle, but somehow in shame we take them within ourselves and we feel dirty, we feel exposed, we feel like we need to lash out against somebody, we need to throw sand in the eyes of anybody so that they don't look at us in our nakedness. That's how we feel shameful. How do we handle that shame? How do we handle that? Well, it's interesting, in the Garden of Eden, we'll look at this in future videos, but the Lord's answer to the Garden of Eden is something very interesting. Adam and Eve just wanted to hide. Adam and Eve just lashed out at one another, playing the blame game with one another. What the Lord does is, instead of Adam and Eve covering themselves, the Lord covered them. 
It's very interesting. Adam and Eve, as soon as they feel guilty, they make coverings for themselves. And you'll know what those, those coverings are. Those coverings are fig leaves. Fig leaves. Um, which, you know, the Lord does not think are great coverings. And so the Lord comes along and He provides a great covering for them. He provides animal skins. Now think of this. Here is the first death that happens in all creation. The Lord has to put to death an animal. Blood has to be shed so that Adam and Eve are clothed. Let's imagine that it's a, a poor lamb and little Flossie gets it in the neck so Adam and Eve can be clothed. And you're thinking, poor Flossie, what did Flossie do to, to deserve that? The answer is nothing. Flossie did nothing to deserve it. Adam and Eve deserved it. Flossie got it in the neck. And then Adam and Eve are clothed in the sacrifice of another. And then they can walk around and they can be okay with one another and okay with God. In the New Testament, uh, the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says, All those who belong to Christ have clothed themselves with Christ. If we've been baptized into Christ, if we've trusted Him, we've been clothed in Christ. And now we belong to Him. And now in the eyes of God and in the eyes of others, we can walk tall. And now we can start to be honest about our shortcomings. We can start to be honest about our sins in the eyes of others and in the eyes of God because we've got that covering. Now we are clothed in the Lord Jesus, our great sacrifice. And we look pretty good to God. We look as good as the Lord Jesus and we can look good to others. We can be confident in our clothing in Christ. And now we can be honest with God. We can be honest with others in this world. There's transparency, there's openness, there's being naked and unashamed once again. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 says this, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness.